All right, good evening, everyone. Tonight we're gathering for a special called session of the Search City Council for January 19, 2018. The first item on the agenda is the calling to order of, the of this session, which I've just done. Following that is the opening prayer and pledges of allegiance to the flags of the United States and the state of Texas. I'll lead us in those. If you'll join me in standing, please. The following prayer was offered before the House of Representatives on June 10th of 1916 by the Reverend Everest Granger. Almighty God, maker, sustainer, preserver of all things, giver of good, we meet in thy name today, and in thy name we desire to proceed with all our deliberations. We pray that thou wilt direct us in the exercises of the hour and of the day, that all things may be done to thy honor and to the betterment of mankind. Help us, we pray thee, in life's way, that we may not simply be good, but good for something. Sanctify us through thy truth. We pray that thou wilt give us thy mind, that we may have divine wisdom in thy heart, that we may look upon the needs of mankind and have a true fellowship and true brotherhood in life. Lead us in the way everlasting. Preserve us as a nation and as individuals to do thy will. Through Jesus Christ we ask it. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. All right, we have um, this evening several items on our agenda. Uh, before I go to hearing of residents, I'm going to go to item number two. Item number two is discussion and possible action regarding the City Council Code of Ethics, including but not limited to the section titled Ethical Conduct Rules. I'll refer everyone to page four, section two, regarding Confidentially, confidentiality of information shared in executive session. In the Open Meetings Act, um, there's no reference to an executive session. There's only reference to closed sessions. Executive session and commentary about an executive session only appears in the Attorney General's uh, uh, guide for uh, elected officials for the Open, Open Meetings Act. In part, to be a bit more clean, I'm going to uh, make a motion to change this language, make it effective immediately this evening. Uh, even though we may have to codify it further in a resolution or ordinance. I'm going to delete the word executive throughout and make some changes. Item number two, confidentiality of shared, excuse me, confidentiality of information shared in closed session. I'm proposing the new language at this time. Council members should keep all matters discussed in closed session confidential. Any council member who violates state law with regard to the conduct of closed sessions shall be deemed to have violated the codes. Is there a second? Second. Questions from council? Mr. Mayor? Mr. Edwards. Is it possible that we could actually get a legal opinion from the attorney, or is that what you just read? Was that from Mr. Zek? Which one? The, was that a legal opinion from you, Mr. Zek? No, I just read some changes I wanted to make to our ethics codes. And the urgency tonight is because of the meeting that we're about to have, I'm assuming? I think so. Okay. No other questions, I'll call for a vote. Aye. 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 Seven ayes and no nays, the motion carries. 
Next item that we have on the agenda this evening, we have hearing of residents. I'm going to, uh, pardon me, it's getting more challenging as I get older. Um, on the list this evening, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 11, 12, it's like 12 or 13 folks, and we'll start this evening with Tim Brown. Mr. Brown? All right, good evening, Mayor, Council, Council. Uh, Tim Brown, 1109 Drayton, Church, Texas. I did write y'all a letter uh, the other day, and I hope y'all got it. I am a concerned citizen. I'm here as a registered voter, a citizen of the city of Schertz. I've lived here since 2000. Uh, I've been involved in the city since we got here, and I've been on the, exec on the uh, Economic Development Corporation for eight or nine years now. But, uh, so I feel that I've been around, I've seen a lot. Uh, uh, I feel very comfortable in this city. I love the city. Uh, it's made us feel uh, welcome uh, throughout. I've also seen how the city's been run for the last 18 years. And I can say with all honesty that uh, the management from Mr. Kessel has been outstanding. It is second to none. And the man is a very talented individual that I am sure will be looked at by many other uh, organizations, you know, if he is ever let go from here. And I believe that would be a great loss to our city. So when we have closed sessions uh, called by the uh, called by city members. It's uh, very difficult to see any good that can be spun out of that, especially in a media event, uh, when you can't talk about what's going on in the closed session, but you can have a closed session to discuss what you're going to do with your city manager. I don't see anything good that can come out of that, especially when the same uh, issue was closed last July. Uh, and there's, to our knowledge, no good reason for it. So outside of that, again, just want to reiterate the support for Mr. Kessel uh, in my positions along the city as a volunteer. Uh, it's been phenomenal. He has brought along, brought this city along leaps and bounds uh, between his work with uh, Mayor Carpenter. I've got to say that the uh, Committee of Committees Advisory Board has been a phenomenal uh, addition to your, to your city by bringing in uh, committee members and chairpersons to hear what's going on in the city and take that information out. Such a great sharing of, of information. It's really helping get things moving and it's really a wonderful thing among the other uh, positive things that I've outlined some of them in, the, in that letter and I hope you all read it. If you have any questions for me, I'll be around there later. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Next up, Glenn Outlaw. Good evening, good to see you all again. Uh, Glenn Outlaw, 3729 Forsyth Park. Um, as a 21-plus um, year employee of the City of Shirts, I, I, I had the pleasure of serving under five different city managers. Uh, and, and I will tell you with all honesty that I think uh, Mr. Kessel has probably been the best so far. I've watched him uh, pull this city um, um, up out of what we were talking about earlier, where we were in the hole and trying to rebuild the reserve fund. I think he's done an outstanding job of, of doing the best he could with what he was given. Um, to echo some of um, Mr. Brown's comments, my problem this evening uh, is this issue seems to be a recurring issue. Um, and I think if you ask, uh, and, and we'll see what the other speakers have to say, but I, I think the city residents are under the impression that things are going well, that Mr. Kessel is doing a good job. Um, given the nature of these closed sessions and the, the vague wording of the uh, agenda item, I don't know whether the man's in trouble or whether you're gonna give him a pat on the back tonight. Um, I, when I ran for council two years ago, one, one of the reasons I wanted to sit up there with you was to find out what goes on behind those closed doors. My personal opinion is there's entirely too much that goes on behind those closed doors that affects us as citizens that we never have the opportunity to hear about. And I understand that uh, there are times, there are subjects that are sensitive and need to be discussed in private. Uh, but I would really like to see you all try to minimize those closed sessions uh, and maybe get a little more specific with the wording, you know, why is it that, that you had to call a special session this evening to evaluate our city manager, okay? 
What's so wrong with telling us, the people, what your issue is with, with a person that we think is doing an outstanding job? Um, and that, you know, I, I don't know what else to say. That's my real issue tonight is, is the fact that this keeps coming up and we have no idea what it's all about. I think it's time that uh, you either put this issue to bed or you at least open it up a little bit and let us know what's going on. Thank you. Yep. All right, next up, Maggie Titterington. Maggie. Maggie Titterington, 10217 Ivy Horn, Shirts, Texas. Um, I'm speaking alongside my fellow residents as well as I don't understand why this keeps coming up. Um, ironically, the last city council meeting I attended, one of our citizens came up here and said, we have been in the news six times in the past two or three months and that he said that this was like putting a black eye on the city of shirts and here we are again. Um, I'm very proud of our city, our city manager, all the wonderful things that he has done, how fiscally responsible, we're transparent, we're winning awards, people are moving here, businesses are moving here as well. So I don't understand that I contacted half the city council and nobody could tell me what this was about. That concerns me. Why? Why can we not know as citizens what's going on in our own city? Also, I, I feel bad for our staff. <laughs> it's Friday night. This is date night, y'all. I, I feel bad that, why couldn't this have waited till Tuesday's meeting, the actual meeting that we have? Why did we have it on Tuesday, which is an off time, and why did I have to find out through social media that we were actually having a meeting? Because I wouldn't think to look on the third Tuesday. We don't have meetings on the third Tuesday. I know the first, the second, and the fourth. So thank you, Councilman Larson, because if I hadn't been on uh, the, the community, I, there's no way I would have known about any of this going on. And I know it's posted on the city, but again, I don't think to look on the third Tuesday because that's not when we meet. So um, I have been part of the city of Shirts for 45 years. Now about 10 of those years, El Paso scattered around, moved around, but I've seen a lot of changes. I've seen when there was no Shirts Parkway, when Weast was still there, when we were having circuses where the little senior villages um, I've seen so many changes, and I have to say the most positive change was bringing the city manager in and, and promoting him from EDC director to management, and our city has prospered ever since. So please tell us what's going on. Very good. Next is Jeff Womack. Good evening, uh, Mayor, Council. My name is Jeff Womack and I reside at 2490, uh, 2944 Mineral Springs. Sorry, normally I come up and I just speak from the heart, but um, it was kind of a warning not to speak so much from the heart or else I might end up in the parking lot. So um, first and foremost, um, kind of want to echo something that uh, Maggie said about tonight being date night. And I want to wish a happy birthday to Stacy Larson and unfortunately her husband is here dealing with this nonsense instead of spending uh, the evening with her. So anyway, tonight I would like to thank city staff and the taxpayers for allowing us this privilege to speak. Last Thursday, July, uh, January 11th, three members of the body in, uh, in front of me called for a special council meeting with a new closed session to be held on Tuesday, January 16th at 6 p.m. This written request was received by the city secretary's office at 144 on that day. This left one work day for citizens and staff to be notified before the Martin Luther King Jr. holiday on the 15th. <clears throat> As we know, we had a bit of ice on the 16th, so the meeting had to be delayed until tonight. In addition to a lot of irritated citizens behind me, or who I'm assuming a lot of them are irritated, um, I counted no less than eight city staff members here tonight and two additional law enforcement officers, all presumably working overtime at taxpayer expense. As a taxpayer, taxpaying citizen of shirts, I would formally request uh, that the cost of this special meeting be made available to the citizenry behind me uh, through an upcoming city council meeting via an, inter, uh, an itemized list. I think it's our right to know how much this meeting is costing us when we have scheduled meetings already. We have our, our you'll, one of the complaints you'll hear sometimes about shirts is we don't have enough staff and yet we're 
having staff work extra overtime to do this tonight. Uh, additionally, and once again, uh, this is a rhetorical question, not directed at any one member, uh, but will those of the council that asked for this special meeting pay for the cost of this meeting? Because I'm having to pay for it, and of course all of y'all are taxpayers too, but we're all paying for this meeting, and it's just crazy. So why are we here tonight? Well, I'm here to support a man who I personally believe through my own interactions is doing a great job for our citizens. He makes anyone who sits in the chairs before me look good because it's much easier to govern when things are going well. And I think all y'all can agree to that. Contrary to what a few say, Schertz is held in high regard by the people in the cities around us. I work all the way on the other side and people that, that live out close to Medina Lake have high opinion of Schertz. Um, as a matter of fact, I've never had anyone uh, say anything bad about shirts directly to me. Uh, Maggie referred to the last city council meeting and, and that seems to be where I hear all the bashing coming from. It usually comes from right here at this podium, um, but it is what it is. Thanks to the Air Force, I moved here to Shirts in 2002 and a local realtor, Janine Claus, told me what a great town Shirts was. I moved into Savannah Square and became neighbors with Tim and Nancy Brown, two people I greatly admire and, to, and do to this day. I lived in Savannah Square for nearly five years and back during those years was proud to come to city council chambers, not these at that time, every year to accept an award from Mayor Baldwin and his staff for my Christmas light display. It's a fond memory I have of shirts. By, uh, by 2007, I yearned for more space, which I think a lot of Texans do. Uh, and I briefly moved out to Lavernia onto some acreage. But by 2010, my life had changed, taken a different direction, and I needed to rent a house, and so Michelle and I ended up in Cibolo for a little over a year. While we were getting back on, on track, um, we decided that we wanted to build a house. We looked, we decided upon the Riata subdivision out in North Shirts, out at 1103. Everybody thinks we're Cibolo. We have a 78108 zip code, but we're proud to say City of Shirts. Um, and so we moved there five years ago. And so we're very happy to be back in Shirts. Um, and the reason why I wanted to come back to Shirts is I knew the politics of Shirts. I knew the amenities that we had in Shirts that none of the other cities around us had. And I trusted the leadership in, church, in Shirts. And as a little bit of a uh, um, humor here, after living in Cibolo, yes, I wanted twice a week trash pickup. So if you've never lived in Cibolo, you don't understand, but they only have once a week trash pickup. Before moving back to Shirts, the city hired Mr. Kessel as, uh, first as the director of economic development and a few months later as the city manager. Back then I had little to no contact directly with Mr. Kessel I was, as I was in no way involved in politics or what was happening with the city. Uh, from July of 2012 to sometime in 2016, I had very little contact with Mr. Kessel that I can really remember. I was just a happy taxpayer, content with life and our city. In 2016, there were a series of zoning requests that troubled me greatly and a lot of my fellow, fellow citizens. I started coming to the PNZ meetings, city council meetings, and even the city council on the go meetings, and yes, the dreaded budget meetings, Brian. Since then, I've always found Mr. Kessel to be extremely professional, knowledgeable, and friendly. He has helped me when I needed help and provided answers or pointed me in the direction of who, I could, who could answer my questions from the city. I've seen him out in public, and he always acknowledged me, and he's always extending a, a welcome hand. I've talked to people in the community that, who I trust and admire, and they universally say good things about Mr. Kessel. I've spoken to friends who live in close proximity but not in our city, and they all say that they wish they had their own Mr. Kessel. And I've spoken to a handful of city employees, who I will not name, and they have said that they think that Mr. Kessel is doing a fine job. As a concerned citizen, I've seen the changes we've made under Mr. Kessel's leadership. Now my question, my request, before you go into this closed session is, why are we here? Why aren't we extending his contract? and why can't we move on from this? Thank you. Thank you, sir. All right, Brent Bolter. Hi, 
Hi, I'm uh, Brent Bolter. I live at 2633 Cloverbrook Lane, Belmont Park subdivision. Uh, council members, Mr. Mayor, um, I'm a uh, retired Air Force Master Sergeant. Spent 20 years working in intelligence. I'm currently employed in the Department of Defense and the Air Force as a senior intelligence analyst. As a consequence of these positions, for the last 38 years, I've had a top secret security clearance. I'm completely familiar with, at times, within government and government operations, you have to maintain secrecy, you have to have meetings behind closed doors, you can't share the information that you get access to with uh, everybody in the community. My concern here is, it seems of late that there's a lot of this closed door, behind the scenes, things going on, which in my mind, uh, when you watch this function in Washington, D.C., uh, calls into question, are there political agendas being played out here? Are there influences from outside of the council that are factoring into this situation? Uh, because generally speaking, in the political arena, when you're doing things behind closed doors and you're having discussions and not keeping citizens informed, it's because you don't want what's really going on to be known by the citizens that you represent. So my perspective here is that it seems like something's going on in the background and that seems to have picked up in the last few months. Other people that have spoken already have spoken to that. I don't know if it's the case here, but for me it's a concern. Like I said, I'm completely familiar with when you have to do things behind closed doors or when you don't have to share information. But at this level of government, what I wanna see from City Council and the mayor is as much openness as possible, as much sharing of information as possible, because not to belabor the point, <clears throat> but everything that I've seen, uh, and I've been a resident of Schertz since 1996, uh, when uh, Mr. Kessel came on board as city manager and going forward, I've been seeing nothing but good things. When this popped up, and in the way it came across, as others spoke to, it was like it was wanting to be done without us knowing about it. And that was cause of concern to me. It was like, we're gonna do this thing, we're gonna get it done, and really nobody's gonna know about it. And then we're gonna announce after the fact, here's, here's the result of this closed door session. So for me, that's just great cause for concern. Okay, I think we and others have spoke to it have a right to know what's going on. I think we have a right to understand uh, what the situation is. So, you're gonna go behind closed doors. You're gonna have whatever discussion that you're gonna have. And then my understanding is you're gonna to have to come out here and vote publicly. And we're gonna know who votes yes, and we're gonna know who votes no. And I will say if the yeses carry the day and that, that's gonna translate into the removal of this man from office, what I'd like to see is a reason why. And the, oh, you just have to trust us, doesn't work for me, okay? Because right now, today, I do pretty much don't, and I work for the federal government. I don't trust what's going on in Washington, D.C. And I think you folks at your level uh, need, to, need to let us know what's going on and why you're making decisions. I think we deserve it. I think we've earned it. I think we put you on council to be there for that reason. So <clears throat> whichever way this goes tonight, you come out, and if it's a yes vote, and that man no longer is going to be city manager? I want to know why. And I think the rest of the citizens in church want to know why. Okay, because if it's the trust me thing, then that, that says to me something political is going on. There's some kind of agenda going on behind the scenes. And to me at this level, it's unacceptable. Thank you. All right, Jim King. Mr. Mayor, Council, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, my name is Jim King. I reside at 3765 Limestone Mesa here in Shirts in the Carolina Crossing uh, North subdivision. Um, I have two primary points, and I will be brief. Um, as a city, we have to have a process of good order and discipline. We have to have structure. We have to have accountability. If we do something wrong, we live with those results, publicly and privately. However, I have heard 
or see nothing um, that reaches to the level of unethical, immoral, or illegal activity by our city manager. Nothing. And if that's the case, you got to tell us. So along that order, my, my vote of confidence for a gentleman I've not met, which many of these people have met, um, is, is strong. I, I have no reason to doubt that he's doing a good job. I see the great fruits of his labor. My point number two, speaking along good order and discipline, is not meant to be personal to anyone, but it's to you as a council. What I see is that we're riding on the public opinion, the waxing and waning, the to and fro of personal opinions. And that does not go with good order and discipline. You can have your opinion and you can discuss that. But we have a contract with me. We have a process to go through and to have this special meeting with essentially no notice and no information is wrong on your part. Thank you. Robin Thompson. Robin Thompson, 967 Oak Ridge, Shirts, Texas. Mayor Carpenter, members of the council, Mr. Kessel, city staff. While regarding tonight's closed session of the council, I can consider a few thoughts. Number one, while the council does have the right to call this meeting, to sign the letter January 11th, schedule a meeting just five days later, when residents are used to council not meeting, three of those days being on a holiday weekend, then reschedule it on a Friday night for the first time in our city's history to anybody's knowledge. When residents and staff and council have a lot of things they could have been doing tonight and after you've spent an entire day in a workshop, this creates a perception of secrecy, urgency, backroom politics, and rush to judgment that our city and our council should be and has been better than in the past. Second, I asked the four council members who did not sign that letter, and you'll recognize this language, to your knowledge, since the recent election, has Mr. Kessel done anything illegal, immoral, or unethical that warrants such a called meeting? All four replied that he had not. I sat on your side as recently as 70 days ago. I was privy to the same information you were. To have over half of our council know of nothing that warrants this meeting is very unusual. The council's answers combined with the council's recent unanimous vote for Mr. Kessel's review to be in June of 2018 implies that for a minority of the council that petty politics and personal prejudices are behind this meeting and this is something our citizens, our residents expect better than our council and which the, dem the council has demonstrated better than time and time again in the past. Third, last October at a meeting in Scenic Hills, Mr. Scagliola publicly stated his support of Mr. Kessel, saying that he believes Mr. Kessel to be an excellent city manager and he will continue to be our city manager for a long, long, long time if he has anything to say about it. Mr. Sagalil ran an excellent campaign. He does have something to say about it, and I look forward to your continued support of our city manager. Mr. Crawford, number four, who called this meeting, one of the three, has stated time and time again, in both written and verbal form, that he wants to remove our city manager in spite of every objective measurement that shows that each year the city of Schertz is better off financially and professionally than the year before under Mr. Kessel's leadership. Mr. Crawford's comments create the impression that tonight's meeting is based on the personal bias and subjectivity of a minority of the council rather than objectivity, again, something our citizens deserve and expect better than and have received better than the council in times past. Number five, I would like to commend Councilman Larson 
Although some may object to his social Facebook post, without that post, the average citizen in shirts, for reasons already stated, would not have known of this meeting and would have been surprised probably at the result. Number six, this is something more personal. When my wife and I were ministers, for 40 years, we were in a position where literally every time the leadership of the church met, we could be dismissed. There are many times when my wife, the first question I got home from a meeting of leadership, the first question she would ask me, do we still have a job? Do we have to move? Mr. Kessel serves under that same atmosphere. I realize it comes with the territory of being a city manager. But council, I would like to ask you to put yourself in those shoes for a few moments. How would you like to know, or how would you like to be in a job where any time your leadership met, you could be dismissed, no matter what your contract may have said? How would you like to go home tonight to your spouse, to your family, and have them ask you, do you still have a job? Do we have to move? It is unfair and unprofessional to put Mr. Kessel and his family under that psychological stress. When this council unanimously voted, there will be no review of his contract until June. I believe you are doing a disservice, and I believe it is a minority of the council, two of whom who are running for council re-election or, or their potential. I believe it is very unfair for the signees of that letter to put our city manager under that psychological stress. It's only to the detriment of the city that that happens. Thank you. Mark Roberts. Good evening, Council. Uh, Mark Roberts, 4300 Spanish Oak, Church, Texas. And I've been a resident here since 1968. Matter of fact, every time I come into this building, I look up and I see those beautiful beams up there that were laying on the ground when I was riding my bicycle around as a kid in this city when they were building this building. So I've been here for, for a little while. I'm a resident here. I also have a business here, I've had another business here. And so I've had the opportunity to serve in a number of different capacities in and around the city, various committees in the city, and going through the construction process when I built my house here, when I built my businesses here. I've had the opportunity to work with most of the, probably just about every office within this city. And have I always agreed on everything that, that uh, has taken place? No. Have I generally been very... Uh, happy about everything that's taken place? Yes, or I wouldn't have located my business here and I wouldn't have had a house here. I've had the opportunity to speak with Mr. Kessel on numerous occasions and interface with Mr. Kessel and have been very pleased with him. He's always been acceptable, accessible, and he's always been very professional. He, Mr. Kessel has done a great job for our city um, and I've been here through several city managers. And I look at where our city is today and even talking with a number of different employees in the city, everybody is happy with, was generally happy with the direction that our city is going. I look at the growth that our city has, and I see the, the, the businesses that want to come here, and it's a great city to, leave, to live in. In this meeting, it just, it upsets me because it was called so quickly. The other thing, it's a Friday night, it's date night, and um, it's, this isn't really where I want to be on a Friday night, but I felt it was important enough that I need to come and support our city manager and speak on his behalf. So I, I, I echo the comments, all the previous comments, so I'm not going to waste any, anybody's more time. I just um, want to thank you for the opportunity, and like the other residents, if this is a terrible position to put our city manager in. This is a quality individual. And I can guarantee you, all we're doing is undermining his ability to do his job. It's terrible. And I guarantee you, there will be probably 20 headhunters 
looking at this guy to hire him. So thank you. Greg Howell. Mr. Mayor, council members, my name is Greg Howell. I live at 2525 Pillory Point in Church, Belmont Park Subdivision. Uh, Scott, I'm sorry that you're not with your wife having a birthday party tonight, but I want to applaud you for posting this on social media. That's the only way I found out they were having a special session. I've, I've taken the time to research the accomplishments Mr. Kessel has had prior to coming to the city of Schertz, and it's very impressive. You did an outstanding job where you were at and all the positions you were at. And the progress of this city since you were selected to be the city manager shows your abilities, and the city of Schertz is far better off for having you here. And I'm, I agree with comments made. I'm sure there are a lot of other cities who wish they had you as their city manager. Which leads me to this, I'm curious, why is there a special session? Based on your accomplishments and the direction the city of Church is going, why would there be a special session called to review your performance? And I had an aha moment when I thought about that. It's because of the skills you have and the direction you've led the city, there are probably three council members who want to give you some kind of reward or recognition. Maybe there's a bonus that we don't know about. It's a shame that they couldn't have taken the money it cost to have this special session and given that to you as a bonus based on your performance. So I thought, well, that's got to be it. They're going to recognize you for your performance. But I also thought, surely there's not a personal political agenda associated with this by members of this council. And if there is, how does that make the city of Shirts look in the eyes of the citizens, in the eyes of other cities surrounding us? It gives us a black eye. And I've noticed in probably the last maybe six months, I just get the impression there is a personal agenda being generated by members of this council. And that is a shame. That is a lack of integrity. And I hope the citizens of this city remember that at the next election. Thank you. Grumpy Azuz. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, City Council. You know, I, as everyone says, Thank you to Mr. Larson. He put it on Facebook, let everybody know what is really taking place. And I hear, I'm, I'm, I believe in myself as the person that balanced that scale. The person that, when I hear being the three council member being attacked, that is so unfair. <clears throat> we remember the affordable income housing Clearly, there's a strong regrets among a lot of people that that should have took place because it would have benefited the taxpayers. It would have benefited the businesses that are now struggling to get some help. But the city council did not have the courage to make the right decision. I said it over and over. If you want to be actively involved, you come here to the meetings and listen. You see what passed, what doesn't pass. You don't come up here because somebody call on you. It's not about, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that everybody's saying, Mr. Kessel, Mr. Kessel, Mr. Kessel. It's about the position. It's about the leadership that the city council decide whether they want to keep or not. You know, I could, I could tell you, I was a council member. We had 300 something employees. You will not believe that amount of employees. And come on, some of y'all know that, y'all sitting up here, that they feel they're under a lot of pressure. There's favoritism that take place by upper management. They cannot speak their mind. But those people that speak in otherwise, they have no clue about all of this. 
you know, sometimes changes is good. You know, I've worked for big companies. I've seen leadership come and go. They do a good job, but there's some areas they're lacking, and there is nothing wrong with a change. For the three city council members that call this, I don't think you all have a special agenda. I don't think Mr. Larson have a special agenda. I think you all need to make the right decision for the employees of the city, for the residents of the city. You're making a decision tonight, folks, not for 40 people. You're making a decision for 35,000 plus people. You're making a decision for many businesses. You're making a decision for the employees that you know and you've heard their calls. Make a good decision. I'm not here to tell you to keep management in place. I'm not here to tell you to take management out of place. I'm here to tell you, vote right. You know what goes on. You understand. I don't blame anybody for coming up here and saying that management is doing a great job and that should not, we all should not make the decision. That's their voice. But what about the 35,000 people? That they really didn't make it up here. That really don't know a lot what's going on. They don't make meetings. Keep in mind I fought for the city employees. And keep in mind, you know a lot of it. Changes is not bad. Changes could be for the good. Thank you. All right, Dana Eldridge. Hi, guys. My name is Dana Eldridge. I live at 2628 Gallant Fox Drive in the Belmont Park subdivision. Not too long ago, we went through the same thing with Mr. Kessel was went into closed session in regards to this. Seems to me like we're going in a circle. And it's going faster and faster and faster. Reminds me a little bit of what happens when things go faster and faster in a circle. We had a real big circle that hit down on the coast called Harvey. Did a lot of damage. Did a lot of damage. It sat there, it rained, and it kept going in a circle. Up here and going up towards Dallas, there's a little city. Got hit with a, tur a, a tornado. Tore it up because it kept going in a circle. Kept going in a circle without a chance to straighten out and move on. Unfortunately, we're going in a circle because somebody, whoever, I don't know who it is, but somewhere there's either a personal or a private agenda that's trying to be forced, causing this city to go in a circle, it's going to die. You can't keep doing this. You got to go forward and you got to put the personal agendas aside because the citizens of Schertz are getting tired of it. Okay? They're getting tired of it. Straighten it out and keep going forward. I've been here since 1996 and we're progressing. And right now, we're not. Roy Richard. Good evening. I'm back. When I come in this room and I look at those pictures of those seven folks sitting behind you, I am confronted with my mortality. Because I'm probably, there's probably one other individual in this room can actually say they knew each and every one of those people. There's probably one other person here that, say that, that can say they worked with most of those people. And what's been great about our city, in my view, is that the right people have come to the front 
at the right time for our city. When my father was mayor, he was the right man for the job in 1960. When Bob Buecher became mayor, he was the right man in 1974. And on and on and on. And each one saw, had a vision for the city, and they built that vision, moved on that vision, built the foundation, moved the city forward. And they were always motivated by one thing, not personal bias, not personal agendas, what is in the best interest of our city. That's what this council needs to look at. Your legacy tonight, this council's legacy, will be decided in this room this evening. And the question you have to ask yourself, are you going to put this behind us, move us forward, or are you going to drive this city in a ditch that could take years and even decades to get out of? I knew and worked with every city manager in this city, except maybe Bob Buecher. And people don't know that he was the first city administrator, but he was. He was the first city administrator. But other than him, maybe I think I worked. I was a prosecutor in the city municipal court for 25 years. So I worked with all the city managers in that period of time. I know them all, worked with them all. And I can tell you unequivocally and without hesitation that that man sitting in that chair is as good as we've ever had or ever hoped to have. I've heard statements attributed to some council members that we can do better. I submit to you that you cannot do better, but you can sure do a lot worse. And you are exposing our city to possible poor administration when you have an excellent administrator sitting at the table with you, if you just use him and support him. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. All right, that's everyone that I had signed up this evening. Before we go into um, our closed session, I'm going to go back to item number two, discussion of possible action regarding the City Council Code of Ethics, including but not limited to the section titled Ethical Conduct Rules. I'm simply going to revisit the uh, motion that I made earlier and the unanimous vote that was given by Council. Um, the, the new rule under our ethical code says council members should keep all matters discussed in closed session confidential. Any council member who violates state law with regard to the conduct of closed sessions shall be deemed to have violated the codes. Council is no longer constrained as to not being able to let go what goes on in closed session, so when we're finished, ask us. Next item we have on the agenda at this time is closed session. City Council will meet in closed session under Section 551.074 of the Texas Government Code. Personnel matters to deliberate the appointment, employment evaluation, reassignment, duties, discipline, or dismissal of the city manager. This time we will go into closed session. We'll recess our open session. We'll get back as quickly as we can. Next item that we have on the agenda is item 1B. Any action necessary to be taken after the uh, closed session? Is there action to be taken? Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor, I move that the mayor requests Mr. Kessel's resignation effective Friday, January 26th. 
Second. I have a motion from Mr. Edwards, a second from Mr. Crawford. Any other comments or questions from council? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. Aye. 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 Nay. Nay. And four ayes and no nay and three nays. The motion carries. Is there any need to continue with the rest of the agenda? No, Hearing sir. no need, we stand adjourned. Thank you.